The first song is one we went to great expense, commissioned that we written over the last few days, and it's called No Nay Never Laying Up. And we're going to try that for you guys now. Nine days, but I've worn every pair of pants five times. <laughs> this is the pants I need to wear when I really need to summon something up. And we have the birdie. The birdie challenge comes to a close today. Oh god, we're the first ones. <laughs> All right, I mean we're three minutes. We're three minutes late. That's not I thought good. we were gonna be last. We're going to be late. All right. I feel it's the worst I felt in a few mornings. But I feel like my soul was reborn after yesterday. That's really well said. Mike, how are you feeling today, all right? Very well. All right, good. No problem. You're in the penthouse, sweet? Yeah, the, the one at the very top where you won't lie on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in Russell Point, which is a, a small uh, holiday village, a uh, population of about 500 people. There's a, an area up here that's undiscovered unspoilt and well worth a visit for anybody that wants to come here. This, this is true to what happened all over Ireland, especially in the 50s, uh, waving the people goodbye. Yeah, Harry, Harry Colt was a designer in 1894 um, who did the original six holes and then it became nine, then it became 18. We're 125 years old this year. Very long sweeping vistas. Felt much more like a Scottish course than uh, say an Irish course, just in terms of Felt a lot more refined and handsome and elegant. One of the things people like about Irish courses are the ruggedness and the rawness of the dunes. Uh, it didn't really get a whole lot of that at County Sligo, but what, what it lacks in that, it makes up for in refinement. You play nine holes out, which is the traditional, with the sea on your left hand side. As you come back, you play along the, along the coast on the right hand side. All right, guys, hey, remember every birdie today could be the last. Woo! Oh, we like that. Sisters in for the money, baby. Sally, what's the pot up to? 72 per person right now. 72 per person. Last birdie takes it all. These guys don't know what the money round's about, but I do. <laughs> we host the West of Ireland here since 1923, and some of the champions of the West of Ireland would have been McElroy, Harrington, Lowry, Joe Carr, Cecil Ewing, and one of your good friends, Ken Carney. <laughs> Our man, Ken. Walking through the clubhouse and talking to members and David, you can tell uh, Sligo takes their role as, as part of the Irish golf landscape and uh, kind of the heartbeat of Irish competitive golf uh, very seriously. It's a, it's a cool, cool element of the club. Great champions there who've gone on to do great things. And even I suppose you take champion four years ago was Harry Diamond, who's now caddying for Rory. So it just shows that there's uh, some very good golfers have played here over the years. Chad, what do you think, man? I don't even know what they do. I don't even know what those do, but they're the coolest looking drummers I've ever seen. Okay, it is supposed to rain this afternoon. Oh, so you're you. going to tee off around 10 to 8. Okay. At 10 to 8, our male voice choir are going to sing you in off the first tee, all right? <laughs> so it's going to be unbelievable, guys. Right? We've got about 20 guys that are going to stand up on the first tee and sing a song for are you. Are you serious? Tee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're going to get a different tier than anywhere else. <laughs> do they need one more? This guy has some choir experience. Hi, Neil. <laughs> they practice every Thursday night under the stewardship of Neil Fitzpatrick. Something unique. I haven't seen it done before, but look, we got to try anything. Good morning, everyone. As we know it's your last day, we hopefully you had a great time in Ireland, and we hope that you've done it right. You've left the best wine to last. Yay! <laughs> And it's no laying up, no laying up, no laying ever, no more. When I say lay up, no never, no more. I've been a poor golfer for many a year. I've spent all my
honey on whiskey and beer. But now I'm back buzzing, I don't have some great scores. Cause I never be laid in a hot no more. And it's snowing up, snowing up, snowing never no more. Well, I play as they Hang with the kid! Oh, the Moab! No! <laughs> <laughs> the big left man. Oh, from the team from the USA. Oh, oh, hey! <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, oh, oh. That's how it's done. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. That's our first and only rendition of that song, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Yeah, yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is that any good? Uh, got me the feeling, man. That's, that's pretty cool. Maybe the coolest thing I've, anyone's ever done for me. <laughs> The first couple of holes, it's a steep climb up the second hill this morning. And then the third hole, you come back down and that's when you really get the first taste of these long views out over the Sligo Bay. And that's where I kind of fell in love with the place. Uh, so this mountain here, this is Ben Bulbin. Ben Bulbin. So this would be Yates country, County Sligo. Uh, you know, WB Yates wrote a lot of his poetry here and he wrote a lot of it about that mountain. Well, not a lot, but it, it does certainly show up in his poetry. So this is just a cool, um, you know, inspiring place. Slago, you know, they have a lot of Yates festivals here or Yates writers retreats. Um, this is where he got a lot of his inspiration for his Gaelic revival and sort of the Irish spirit of this place. Kind of played a, a slight low point and then you crest this hill and everything just opens up right in front of you. And it's definitely one of the more thrilling shots in the course. The fourth hole is just a super par three. It's 150 meters long, it has no buggering. And you're looking at it going, this has got to be an easy hole. And you stand up on the tee and you go, how am I going to hit this green? Go, Bob, go, get up. Come on, come on. Shot, Randy. Just this awesome piece of property, you play the first Four or five holes up here, work your way up the hill, and then you get to the jump, which is this awesome par four um, off this launch launch pad. Uh, it's actually par five, but I mean, I just looked where Sally hit it, and it's a friggin' par four today. I'm about 470, downhill, downwind, par five. I love that about Ireland. They don't try to flex on you on the par fives. So like, here it is. Try your best. Liced it, mate. 17 here on the fifth. Got 140 left. I'm ashamed. That's disgusting. Flash face technology at the finest. Be good. Get up, get up, get up. Shot. Look at Eagle. Oh shit. Let's give it a knock. Great speed. DC is now the birdie holder. Chad for Eagle. Oh, good fight, man. So six was my favorite hole in the course. Uh, just doesn't look like much from the tee. 
And then you get up to the green and there's this gutter right in front of the green and a, a mound on the left that you, that you can and should use. Um, DJ, I think, used it accidentally, <laughs> bringing his ball in. Is that shot any good? 30 yards left. Kicked it off the slow back. Oh, don't say accidentally. So the seventh hole, there's a few fairway bunkers out there. Definitely have to drive it straight, long to mid iron over this burn. That uh, you can bail out to the left, clearly cover the burn, and then you have a tough pitch coming back. Uh, or you can go straight at the pin and when it's tucked on the right and hit it directly into the burn. Brutal, brutal drop you know, flop shot, if you're even capable of playing that off the tight grass. Seven and then eight T, you feel like you're, you're in like central England. It felt different than, than the rest of the courses we played on the trip. Good swing. Golf shot. All right, so this is much different than, than anything we've played. It is a lot different. I mean, this is a, you know, the West of Ireland Championship here, and you just have a sense, this feeling at Ross's point, that this is like, it's proper golf course. Pro like, it's just proper. Uh, it almost feels more kind of Scottish in some ways, not as wild as what we played yesterday, uh, but it's just phenomenal. A great variety of holes. It's kind of right in front of you. It's, uh, it's really challenging. They have these deep burns everywhere, which we haven't seen on any other links. So it's been a cool trip because I think you know, you play a lot of links and they can all start to look the same, but when the courses we've been playing, I think you see that there's actually a real variety among links courses, which is cool. Then you go out to the ninth, which is another par three, surrounded by bunkers, and it's just a lovely par three. Well, first of all, the ninth hole, great name, Cast a Cold Eye, which is, <laughs> some of these holes have great names. Then downhill to one of the longest greens I've ever seen. Kind of distracted the whole time by the view out towards Ben Bulbin, which is this tabletop mountain out in the distance. And then 11, Lissadell, probably my second or third favorite hole in the course. Fairway slopes pretty dramatically, left to right. You've got to hug the heck out of that left side. Huge fall off on the right side of the green. And then some really cool undulations in the fairway as well. Oh, oh he's done it, folks. Awful, awful approach shot in there. Short right. Hold the chip. I think that was the only chip I hold on the whole trip. It was a TCT uh, chip. Yeah, and it didn't even see it go in. Uh, it was, I was so far, I was so far down there. Long, sick. Just one time, I want to play smart golf. Today would not be that day. Not be that day. Battle. Twelve was one of the best holes on the course. Longish, par five. It only plays 520 or 530 on the card. Plays directly into the prevailing wind, and then you crest the hill and you and you come down. And there's a lighthouse out in the distance. You play downhill to really elegant green. Let's go! Great shot. We had set up the tripod. On a dune, and uh, I tried to hit a hybrid out of uh, out of kind of a not a great lie, but not a not a craft lie either, and kind of turned the club over a little bit, fuzz the tower. Woo! Woo! That buzzed the tower on it. That was like within six inches. Honestly, it would have been cool if it just smashed, <laughs> smashed the lens right out. 
Oh, cheers. Oh! <laughs> Crack on, good set. I thought I was gonna hop in. Be good. Be so good. Be so good. Oh, great shot, dude. Yeah, so 13 is part three. And you're surrounded by bunkers with a, a stream running along the back of it. It's downhill, typically plays downwind. You've got bunkers in front, bunkers left, bunkers right, burning back. Big green, but it slopes away from you. Uh, so you should be thinking, hey man, this is this is not that long of a part, part three, and you've got all these, all these different factors playing in where they could trip you up. Any one of them can trip you up. Two or three of them could trip you up. And it just kind of catches you uh, unexpectedly. Is this the stuff of nightmares? Yeah, I, I, like, there's so many options for what to do that like, there's no option. I'm just going to get inside my own head. What are you going to do? I don't know. Uh, I kind of want to putt it. Oh, boy. I like to ring the bell, Randy. Oh, I would love to. So this bell says presented by the Irish Chartered Accountants. Hey! Whoa, that's us. At, at Ross's Point since 1953. Cheers to all accountants everywhere. And then you come to 16, which is a hundred and nearly 200 yard par three. Usually it plays anything from a five iron to a, a driver. You feel me, man? Yeah, I do. So 15 and 16 kind of ran together for me. I don't think they ran together for Chad. <laughs> The guy might be the best par three player in the world. Uh, I feel like he flagged it on every single par three that we played. <laughs> oh gosh, be good. <laughs> good shot. That must have looked really freaking cool. <laughs> Didn't turn at all. Yeah. Can't even ring the f bell. <laughs> What's your hair about? Uh, 17. Dog leg power four up the hill. You stand there and you're looking at, you're gonna look at your tee shot and it's 235 yards to a dip in the fairway. You have to make the decision on the tee. Do you go, try and go over the dip and look for a lie to be able to play a, a, an uphill approach? Do you stay short and hit maybe three, three clubs longer up to an elevated green that runs off? It's a ball buster of a hole. And, uh, and one that I would not want to be playing coming down the stretch during a big tournament. Look, you make four there, I buy you a pint of Guinness and you come in. <laughs> Go. Go. Oh yeah. Ah, that's a f***ing golf shot. Stone and home we go. Looks like it. I thought 18 was, a, was an exceptional finishing hole. Um, you know, you've got what's largely a blind tee shot. Um, there's, a, I think, a rock up on the hill. Dorito at the be, last. Be well right. I can do that. <laughs> TC's drive split the storm. Courses we played on the trip, this is the one I would most want to play every day uh, and be a member at. It's got layers to it. You're not going to unlock it in 
one, five, even ten rounds. And the golden hearts of the prophets, so oh tell me, why so silent ye hang from the willows? Once again. No, it just didn't get there. Oh no! The days that are past, we have drunk from the cup of affliction and have shed bitter tears of repentance. Dramatic Dune Land. Use your imagination around the greens, uh, the ever changing elements, the Lynx Golf, the wind. Uh, it's exciting to play. We got a goodie bag we showed up at Instagram. What do we got? It's a flask. I don't know a flask. I hope it's not full. We're not going to be able to stand up. Oh, yeah, God. There's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely some whiskey in there. Whoever makes the last birdie of the trip takes all. Oh, I just want to know where the gold at. <laughs> where the gold at? But I don't do, you, do you think you can do it? Well, he's so confident. I do think he can do it. Do you think this. he can do it? Do I think he can do yeah. it? He looks very determined. Kevin, do you think he can do it? Absolutely. Neil? Yes. Oh, he's got it. Oh, he's, oh, he's got, got it. He's doing a good guess. <laughs> It's an absolute oh, unit. Oh, twirl it. Down the hatch. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know any hard games? He's got a little Guinness uh, mustache. <laughs>